I'm Dr. Sherry Stewart, and I'm the Assistant Dean for Admissions at the Colorado State University College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. Essentially, I'm in charge of veterinary admissions for the DVM program here. The obvious outcome for someone achieving the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree is to become a, a clinical practitioner. In other words, taking care of ill animals, uh, horses, you name it, dogs, cats, exotic animals. Uh, but that's only one of many things. Even within clinical profession, you can do many, many things. You can uh, become a specialized uh, surgeon of, of orthopedic surgeon. You can become um, an ophthalmologist, a board-certified veterinary ophthalmologist. So, so even clinical practice, there are a variety of things that you can do. You might decide to go on and do research as a veterinarian. There's a big demand for DVM degree combined with a PhD. Uh, you can go into all kinds of research. It's been proven that um, veterinarians are very good at research because of the broad perspective of the functioning body. Veterinarians can also work at pharmaceutical companies. They uh, often end up in uh, food production companies, possibly even inspection of food through the USDA. The USDA has lots of jobs for veterinarians, um, certainly aside from the classical thoughts of uh, food, food inspection. If you're interested in disease outbreaks and understanding how those occur and for controlling them, uh, they may or may not involve animals, but many veterinarians are involved in finding out where an unknown disease is coming from and how to control it and how it started. You may end up as an astronaut. One of the very first veterinarians uh, was a friend of mine who went up in, in one of the um, out of space uh, explorations, and he was very prepared, well prepared as a veterinarian and also a PhD in physiology to go forth and discover new, new frontiers. Might even end up uh, as a service veterinarian. You could uh, work exclusively on a large equine reproduction um, uh, site. So pretty much whatever you want to be. Uh, I, for instance, am a veterinarian, and I never thought I would end up in administration at a veterinary school, but, but I love it. I'm adaptable, and, and I teach histology, and um, might, you might end up in that area as well. The veterinary program is a four-year professional program, and it, it, all four years must be completed. It's not a come as you can. You go through the same class that you're admitted with, you will graduate with. It's a sequential event. So uh, the first year is usually what's normal. What's the normal animal look like? How does it function? What are the normal processes of how an how, uh, animal works? So you're going to get a lot of anatomy, physiology, histology, um, just diseases themselves, bacteriology, virology, pathology. Uh, the second year are how diseases then interrupt that. What, what's abnormal and how do these processes become disease and how are they manifested as clinical signs in, in the various species? Um, by the third and fourth years, you are in the hospital as a veterinary student, and about half of the third year is clinical rotations and learning actual clinical procedures. Half is, again, some coursework in, in areas of, of special interest. The fourth year, you function as a veterinarian, but with a, veter uh, a licensed veterinarian overseeing your activities. And so veterinary um, license does not uh, require additional internships or additional training beyond veterinary school. You, when you graduate from veterinary school, you are a licensed veterinarian, and you can practice and are competent to practice. If you decide you want more training, you can uh, do a one-year internship. You apply for those uh, at a large uh, urban practices and or veterinary schools, and about a third of our graduates do go into internships. Beyond that, you may decide, I want to do surgery on horse bones, and so you may get a residency in equine orthopedics and really become a specialist in surgery on and laminous in horses, and in that, that way you would become what is called board certified and that you are known to be a specialist in the field. So in terms of just a, a summary and outline of what it takes to get them into veterinary school, 
good ac undergraduate uh, academic preparation, although most veterinary schools do not require completion of a bachelor's of science degree. You can get admitted to veterinary school without completing a bachelor's degree in college. Most of the applicants do have a bachelor's degree or are in the process of completing one when they are admitted. So basically, the application cycle is a year in advance of when you're actually admitted. So someone might apply as a, as a um, beginning senior in college, would be completing that, that time uh, while they're going through the admissions process, and then they would matriculate the following year and have completed their degree. That's a common scenario. In terms of the actual coursework, um, I'm going to give kind of a common core list of courses that most veterinary schools in the United States do, do require. Some general liberal arts courses, usually college composition, along with uh, 12 credits or so of liberal arts electives. A few veterinary schools do require uh, speech communication classes. It's best if a candidate who's applying to a specific veterinary program check to make sure uh, that they are meeting all the requirements before they reply. But these are, are the most common requirements across the United States. Uh, almost every program requires biochemistry, and, it, and by biochemistry we mean a biochemistry class that requires organic chemistry as a prerequisite. So you're talking an upper division biochemistry class along with a series of chemistries that lead to that. So it's quite a bit of chemistry. Um, we require statistics, about half of the schools require statistics, about the other half require calculus. So some kind of mathematical preparation is required. Along those same lines, physics is required. One or two semesters of physics with laboratory, depending on the program that you're applying to, but some minimal um, physics is required. Genetics is required by almost every veterinary program, and again, we want kind of an upper level genetics class that does require some general biology as a prerequisite. And um, other than that, I think that's pretty close to, to what the veterinary schools require. We try to keep our requirements generalized so that candidates can take a number of different kinds of degrees. Uh, to, to mention a few of the more common ones would be biology, zoology, microbiology, uh, could be just any kind of biomedical sciences, but then you can also do animal sciences, equine sciences. Uh, that's just to name a few of the more common ones. Again, we do get people with English degrees and, and non-science degrees that, that take the extra science and are admitted. So that is the, the academic preparation. I would say the average candidate has mostly A's, some B's, and an occasional C in courses. Um, and a nice stable academic history is probably more successful than one that's erratic and up and down and, and those kind of things. But of course, life steps in sometimes and, and creates those things. And most of, most of the veterinary schools will consider circum special circumstances that may have affected one's truck through their academic history. Um, we also highly value veterinary experience in a variety of ways. The more hours, the better. Uh, the more variety of experiences you have, the better. So um, we will be looking at that. We look at animal experience, leadership opportunities. A lot of times you can get leadership in a job. You know, maybe you're the nighttime manager for a restaurant or something. We look at that as, as considerable leadership. So it's not always just things like club associations, like president of the pre-vet club. Very good, but uh, people can be creative about the way they think about their leadership roles and will value them in, in, in all kinds of different ways. We also value people who give back to the community. If you think about your veterinarian, you want a veterinarian who who is mentoring you, who shows up at the local fair and is helping the 4-H group and um, in many ways gives, is, is seen as a leader who gives back to the community. So we are looking for uh, those kinds of qualities and people who are, are seeking admission to veterinary school. And, and again, in a variety of ways you can demonstrate. It may not be just one big commitment, as many people think it is. Maybe you, you work at a, an animal shelter or something, and that's wonderful. But also, you're, you're probably a busy person, and maybe there are a, a stream of small participating kinds of things. And you should keep track of those as well. They are significant over time to us. Finally, we have you write a personal essay, which is, is usually the biggest challenge of, of the process of getting admitted and, and seeking to go through veterinary school. And um, 
again, we're looking at your connection with becoming a veterinarian, what you know about it, and how, how you will contribute to that profession. Three letters of recommendation. First of all, the advice I would give is dependent on whether you're currently in K through 12 or you're in college uh, or beyond in a, in a, um, a career, other career or possibly in a graduate program. Just to give you an overview of the high school, if you're in high school, um, concentrate on taking science classes, math classes, but don't forget that a lot of doing well in college is also English and writing. Those are the kinds of background courses I would suggest you have. Uh, take chemistry in high school if all possible. Uh, take up through calculus, although not necessarily take calculus in high school. Once you get to uh, college, you'll be taking a general, uh, a classical degree preparation would be biology, but you can take music if you want, as long as you take the courses that most veterinary schools require, which are along the lines, as you might expect, of uh, biology, chemistry, advanced biology, such as genetics, and advanced chemistry, such as biochemistry. Um, that's pretty much what most of the veterinary programs require. A good preparation so that, that we can determine from your academic history that you have a good chance of handling a very rigorous, tough academic curriculum once you get admitted to the veterinary school. So just a good solid preparation mostly in the sciences will prepare you well for veterinary school. But we take people from all backgrounds uh, of preparation as long as they do have topped whatever degree they have off with a little bit of upper division by medical sciences. So beyond that, uh, we want you to know what you're getting yourself into. For instance, a little bit of work with a veterinarian would be a good idea. How do you know you want to be a veterinarian? Maybe you've owned pets, but maybe it's it's more than you realize uh, the, what goes on in the back of the, the clinic where you take your own animal or when your veterinarian comes out to your ranch and sees your animal. You don't really know where he or she goes when they leave. They probably are going home to work on books and, and <laughs> their, their bills, etc. But um, knowing what it's really like to be a veterinarian is very important, and we will value that in the admissions process as well. Average applicant has between 500 and 1,000 hours of veterinary experience, and it can be in a variety of ways like the ones that I, I talked about before. You might work with a veterinarian in a research arena, in a classical clinical area, maybe work um, at a zoo with a veterinarian. So many ways you can get that experience, but we really like to see that experience. In the same kind of avenue, just plain old animal experience is really important. Maybe you grew up on a ranch. You really know how to handle a thousand pound animal without getting trampled. That's a, that is a skill that is valued when you apply to veterinary school. So keep track of things. Uh, keep, I always advise people to keep a folder when you do things like work with animals or you work with a veterinarian. Just keep track of your hours. It's kind of like preparing preparing for application to veterinary school is like preparing your taxes. You just get all those documents documents together, which people don't normally do anyway, but we suggest that you do it and um, have them ready to go at the time of application. We also value what you would value in your own veterinarian. Uh, you expect them to have good uh, communication skills, maybe be leaders in the community, certainly contributing to community service, mentoring some of you who hope to go to veterinary school. So we will look for these qualities in applicants as well. Uh, a give back kind of personality to the community, leadership, and uh, communication skills.